Hello children, welcome to another episode of Waterbrook Sunday School Online. My name is teacher Sakina and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. We are going to be talking about the fruit of the spirit called gentleness, which means this is fruit number eight out of nine. We're almost done. I'm so excited. So let's begin now. Usually in my classes, before we begin, we do a checklist. So on my checklist, I'll ask you to, I hope you have your Bible, your notebook, and a pen or even a pencil to note down the memory verse or new words that you hear so that you can go through them during the week. All right, so as you're getting your things together and you know trying to settle in, I have three questions for you. Are you washing your hands? Are you reading your books? Are you helping your parents? I hope you're doing all of the above. Okay, so I'll assume that all of you have your stuff and now we can begin with a word of prayer. So eyes closed, hands together, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of health. Thank you, Lord, for a warm bed to sleep in, clothes to wear, and food in the kitchen. We know that not all children have these things, and so we pray that you may be their healer, their provider, and their protector. And as we learn about gentleness, we pray that our hearts may be open to hear from you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. So next up, we usually sing a song. And today, this is um, a song called Jesus is Mine. Uh, you can ask your parents or older siblings to help you find it. And it, I'm going to sing a very short portion of it. It's very simple and very fun. You can dance along, make dance steps. So here it goes. Jesus is mine. He's mine, he's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine, he's mine, he's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine, he's mine, he's mine forevermore. He's my savior, my redeemer, he's mine forevermore. He's my savior, my redeemer. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. Jesus is mine. He's mine. He's mine forevermore. That's it, children. Jesus is yours forever and ever and ever. The moment you tell him, come into my heart, he's coming in there to stay and he's yours and you're his and it's just so beautiful, all right? So, last week we learned about faithfulness and you can go back to the previous video to know more about it, but basically we learned that faithfulness is somebody who keeps their promises and God always keeps his promise to us and learning about it for us is always keeping your promise to other people and always doing what you said you would do, right? So today we're going to learn about gentleness. What does it mean to be gentle? So I looked it up and this is what I found. It is the quality of being kind, tender, or mild-mannered. So in case you're like kind, tender, mild-mannered, let me show you an example. So here I have an egg, yeah? If I play around with it like that and just toss it higher and higher, it might break. But because it's fragile, which means it could break, I'm gentle with it. I'm gentle with how I handle it, even if I'm going to throw it. I don't throw it too high and I make sure that I catch it, okay? So, if you're gentle with an egg, how can you be gentle with people? How is God gentle with us? When we're gentle, we're careful with people and with things like the egg. People's feelings are fragile or sensitive. They can be broken or hurt and God wants us to treat other people with care and gentleness because he loves them. Showing gentleness to people means that you try to think about their feelings first rather than insisting that you get your way all the time. So, for example, maybe your small brother or small sister um, wants something, 
um, I read this story um, that a friend of mine shared on her Facebook page and she's like she has two boys and one of them uh, the older one she was trying to show him how to sweep and then the little brother comes along and says I want to help but then the big brother is like no I can do it all by myself but do you know what she did she tried to explain that you know what your little brother is trying to help you. He wants to be like you. He likes what you're doing and he's trying to copy you. He's not trying to be mean. And you see, the mom was gentle to the firstborn, the older brother. She didn't go like, why don't you share with your brother? No, she explained to him. And then the older brother made sure that when he was sweeping, he left a small portion so that his little brother could feel like he was helping him out that's an example of what it means to be gentle not shouting not loud but just you know to speak to somebody kindly all right so in the bible there is a story and the story is of this wonderful woman called abigail now abigail was married to a man called nabal nabal means Fool, I know. Why would any parent name their child name their child a name that means fool? I don't know, but here's how the story goes. So Nabal was very rich, you know, had lots of land, had lots of cattle and goats and sheep, and had lots of people working for him. So David was on his way with his men, mighty men, lots of men, fighting men. So they are on their way and they decide to take a break on Nabal's land. So while they were there, um, they would help out Nabal's shepherds, right? And David was like, you know what? We need food, we need water. So he got some of his men together and told them, go to Nabal and tell him we've been helping your guys out here. Can you help us with some food and water? So they go and they walk and they walk and then they get to Nabal and Nabal is like, who are you again? Who is David? What do you mean that I, I need to give you food and water? And then the men came back and said, boss, I'm, I'm imagining Simon, boss, we told him what you said and he told us to get out of here, scat, run, get out of my land. And David was so angry because, you know, we've kept, we've kept Nabal's property safe. We've kept his animals safe. We didn't slaughter them. They could have. They could have slaughtered his sheep and maybe helped themselves, but they didn't. So David was so angry and he told his men, you know what, everybody, get your swords together, get your weapons together. I am going to finish everybody in that house. So behind the scenes, Abigail is told, oh, Abigail, there's going to be trouble. You are all going to die because your husband, foolish man, decided to tell off David. So what does she do? She gets um, water and she gets food and she loads up the donkeys and then she goes to David, yeah? And as he's approaching, he's like, who's that? Who's that? So she approaches gently because she knows David is angry. And then she gets off the donkey and bows down really low and says, please forgive my husband. He's a fool. He's silly. And please accept this food and water. Please spare his life. Please spare our lives. And do you know because of Abigail's quick thinking and her action, Nabal, you know, wasn't killed by David, but he later on died. And then Abigail went on and, to be, and became his wife. So I don't know, was that a happy ending perhaps? But the main point is Abigail was gentle with David when he was upset. And because Abigail was gentle with him, his anger disappeared. So what can we learn from this story? Number one, even when someone is sad or angry, it's important to listen and be thoughtful of others at all times. You know, I don't, the Bible doesn't give us like how the whole conversation went, but Abigail listened. Abigail listened to David even though he was angry and upset. Number two, gentleness is something we have to practice every day so we can get better at it. I'm also learning how to be gentle. I know teacher Sakina looks like she's the sweetest person ever, but that's not the truth. Sometimes I can be really mean and I have to remind myself that God is gentle with me when I make a mistake. He doesn't get a big stick and beats me or anything. He forgives me and we, you know, we move on. So if God loves me like that, why can't I love people like that? Be gentle with them. 
And finally, when we practice gentleness, it gets easier to treat people gently. When we treat others gently, they'll often, they'll often begin to treat us more gently too. That's the truth. You know, like when someone is having a bad day and they talk badly to you, and then, you know, you can feel like, yeah, I want to talk badly back to you, but then you're like, I'm sorry that you're having a bad day. How can I help? Or, you know, you just kind of like, it's called disarming. It's like when somebody has weapons, they were ready to fight, and then you say something kind, then they're like, oh, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a bad day. How can I help you? Yeah? So, you know, those are the three things that we have to practice. Listen and be thoughtful. Practice it daily and be gentle to others and they'll eventually be gentle to you. So kids, as we close the lesson, our memory verse comes from the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 5 and it says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So basically what that means is let everybody know you to be gentle because you know what? The Bible says that nobody knows the day or the time when God is coming back and he doesn't want to find you grumpy or angry or making someone's life miserable. So let your gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. Well, that's the end of our lesson today. And I usually close my classes with a song and it goes like this. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. All right, children. See you next week. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Bye.